ハッピーハナカメリークリスマス and whatever else Romans and countrymen, lend me your ears. Enemies, too. Come to meditate upon the dead, upon death and dying. Thank you for accompanying me in this meditation. In reading session. And action. Maybe we should start all over. Hello, friends and enemies and loved ones. This is a reading and meditation session. Oh, I should have this in here. This is the basket of jewels that I have here. I put placed the jewels all around this altar. This is an altar now. We could think of this as an altar. We could visualize、uh, Jesus or the Buddha here. And the left. So there's the Buddha. And on, the, on its right,、uh, teachings. These are teachings in books. And on the right, Visualize a stupa that represents the mind. So now it's a qualified Buddhist altar or spiritual altar or Christian altar. So we take refuge. So I'm going to put some more jewels and fine ornaments.、Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, trying to keep the, the spirit of Christmas going. He's about to die, be dead. Most people are thinking about Black Friday for all the holidays. Okay. Now,、uh, so we're going to take refuge. Why do we take refuge?、Uh, everyone takes refuge in something, like we take refuge in our country and, and its president. For protection from enemies. So, in this case, we're gonna take refuge in something more、uh, transcendental, you could say, more spiritual. So, we take refuge in,、uh, oh, that's a nice statue of, should I take it out? I could borrow it. Wait, I'll be right back.、Uh. Okay, I stole this temporary. Okay, so we take Feliz Navidad and Año Prospero. Well, okay, we take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. The Sangha is like the community. Of followers, the church, you could say. Okay, now I'll, I'll, I'll take it back. It, doesn't belong, it belongs to the family of the John and O'Donnell. So keep, so keep that in mind. So we take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. Now I'm gonna.、Uh, Now that we've done that, we can start our meditation. And, and this is a meditation and reading.、Uh, so we can just read from、uh, this book called Buddhism 101 Questions and Answers, a handbook for Buddhists. White Science Publish, Buddhist Publications, 2009 by Kai Tian.、Uh, he's a. I think this is Kai Tian. He was a.、Uh, who is this Kai Tian? Well, he's written some books.、Uh, well, there's no bio, bio on him. 
Okay, it looks like he's, uh, dear friends. He's from Los Angeles, I guess. This handbook, Buddhism 101, Questions and Answers, is a selected collection of Buddhist basic teachings for beginners. While composing books, we thought of in particular about those Buddhists who joined in initiative, initiatively started, who just initiatively started to study and practice Buddhism. That's not me. In environments of multiple religions and multiple cultures. Therefore, the basic theme introduced here serve to provide readers with a general view of the Buddhist teachings in regard to both theory and practice. Ah, so we dare not go further into intensive issues of Buddhist philosophy as doing so may lead to difficulties for beginners. I'm having difficulty with Buddhist philosophy. However, the selected questions discussed here are the core of teachings of Buddhism. As a beginner, you need to master these teachings firmly and precisely before going further into the Buddhist studies. Ah, that's great. Uh, I'm having difficulty. So, so here's some of the questions. What common features does Buddhism share with other religions? Uh, what is the difference between Buddhism and other religions? What is the brief history of Buddha, of the Buddha? What is the essential characteristics of Buddhism? Does Buddhism advocate for renunciation of the world? Is Buddhism a religion or a philosophy? What is the essential tenet of Buddhism? Oh, let's go to six and seven. Okay, this one's interesting. Is Buddhism a religion or a philosophy? The modern world is home to various kinds of religion as well as various concepts of God. Moreover, each religion has its own doctrine and vocation. However, based on the characteristics of religions, we may generalize all world religions into two groups. Theistic religions, religions believing in the existence of either one personal deity, monotheism, or multiple deities, polytheism, such as the creator, God, Brahma, gods, etc., who created and controlled the life of human and nature, or non-theistic religions, religions that do not believe in the existence of any deity whose works create and control the life of both sentient and non-sentient beings. In the limit of this definition, Buddhism is a religion that does not have a personal god, but incorporates all the functions of a religion as characterized by the modern view of religious studies, including conceptions, canonical languages, doctrines, symbols, rituals, spiritual practices, and social relationships. Yet many people today consider Buddhism to be a philosophy of life or a philosophy of enlightenment. This is just a personal choice. Oh, this one's interesting. What is the essential tenet of Buddhism? The essential tenet of Buddhism was taught by the Buddha in his first teaching in the Deer Park, Sarnath, which focused on the Four Noble Truths, Chaduari Aryasatyani. The truth, uh, which, uh, here's the first truth, the truth of suffering, Dukkha. Causes of suffering, what causes suffering? Cessation of suffering and that's the third one, cessation of suffering. That means that suffering can be ended, can end. And the noble path leading to the cessation of suffering. Yeah. The, the fourth one is like the prescription. It's a, it's a path, so it's a journey. So uh, it's not a pill that you take and instantaneously you uh, and all suffering, it's a, it's a struggle. Following this first Dharma teaching, the Buddha taught about non-self, i.e. no independent entity is perpetual and invariable in the existence of five human aggregates, form, feeling, feelings, perception, mental formation, in consciousness. Ow. In other words, nothing in either the physical or mental world can be considered an immortal self or permanent ego. In addition, speaking of the Buddhist essential tenet, it is important to remember a historical fact, namely, on the way to enlightenment, the Buddha deeply meditated on the law of 
Upanishadda, dependent origination, during which the Bodhisattva Siddhartha became a Buddha. Therefore, we may conclude that the essential tenet of Buddhism includes teaching of the Four Noble Truths, non-self, and dependent origination. So, if we get those teachings, those three teachings, understand them well, then we may become a Buddha. Okay. Okay. Let's see, what's another good one? Uh, let's see. Okay, here's an interesting one. Regarding practical activities, is there any difference between Southern Buddhism and Northern Buddhism? Because uh, scholars uh, have uh, categorized Buddhism into two major schools, you could say. No, not really schools, major kinds. <laughs> But there's schools in them. So, uh, Southern Buddhism and Northern Buddhism. Uh, I believe Southern Buddhism has ha, has to um, comprise of uh, where is it? Okay, so, Southern Buddhism. Uh, it's because uh, Buddhism started in Nepal or northern India and it moved south into Sri Lanka and it flourished there. So that's south. Myanmar, that's not quite south. That's in Burma. But it moved from Sri Lanka to Myanmar. Thailand, that's south of China. Laos and Cambodia. So that's considered southern Buddhism. Meanwhile, northern Buddhism uh, it's also called Mahayana Buddhism, spanned to northern India and became popular in countries such as China, Tibet, Mongolia, Korea, Japan, and Vietnam. This author is Vietnamese, so, and th there's a Vietnamese uh, Buddhist center in White Sands in Florida. That's towards Cocoa Beach. Okay, so there's uh, there's uh, differences in the, in the two, and uh, let's see, oh, where is it? Hmm. So is there any difference between Southern and Northern B Buddhism? When speaking of monastic lifestyle, Southern Buddhism still maintains a primitive style for everyday activities, which were traditionally set up during the time of the Buddha. In other words, monks in Southern Buddhism all wear yellow robes, eat one meal a day at noon, study and recite the Pali Sutras. Accordingly, the specific feature of monks in Southern Buddhism is that they all wear the same style of robes with the same color, yellow, and all recite the same canonical language, Pali. For this reason, monks in Southern Buddhism, even from different countries, can sit down and recite the same sutra expertly and skillfully. That's cool. On the contrary, monks and nuns in Northern Buddhism do not keep the traditional lifestyle as primitive Buddhism does. Rather, that's kind of de de denigrating, calling it primitive, but no. Primitive, maybe calling it uh, orthodox or uh, early Buddhism. <laughs> yeah, very conservative Buddhism. Rather, they adjust their lifestyle in everyday activities as well as in spiritual practices relying on different habits, customs, national cultures, and social requirements. Thus, the lifestyle of monks and nuns in Northern Buddhism are diversely dependent on various traditions of different natives. For example, monks and nuns in Northern Buddhism wear different style of robes with different colors. Canonical languages are translated into different languages and followers can eat more than one meal a day depending on health issues. Generally speaking, Northern Buddhism is a form of development by nature. Therefore, it has effectively adapted to social needs to become the first priority in the mission of preaching the Dharma. So, what, but what about 
That's practical activities. But what about in the process of enlightenment? Is there any difference between Southern Buddhism and Northern Buddhism? Traditionally, the process of enlightenment and emancipation of a Buddhist holy one is concretized in the hearer, Shravaka. Four stages of attainment that include stream enterer, Sotapana, one once returner, Sakadagami, non returner, Anagami, and complete liberation, Arhat. This process of enlightenment has been explained in detail. A holy man or a woman must purify all their afflictions practically by cutting off ten fetters, Samyojana, as follows. Belief in an individual self, sakaya diti, doubt or uncertainty about the Dharma, vichicha. Attachment to rites and rituals, silabhattaparasmasa. It's a fetter, being attached to rituals. Sensual desires, ooh, kama raga. It's an attachment. Hatred, vyapada. Craving for existence, rupa raga. Ooh, that's a tough one. We're afraid to die and we crave our existence. So we have to uh, let go of that. Uh, craving for non existence. Ah, oh, we gotta let go of that too. Uh, pride in self, Re restlessness or distraction and ignorance. Thus, in regard to spiritual training, no difference exists between Southern Buddhism. In Northern Buddhism, although the concepts used to describe this process may vary, such as the expansion of the notion, spiritual end, and saving other sentient beings in the ten stages of Mahayana Bodhisattva development. Briefly, or the descriptions of the way to enlightenment may be diverse, the content of spiritual liberation always remains the same, namely to attain enlightenment, an arhat or a bodhisattva, must completely delete the ten fetters of defilement. Process of liberation. So they have a, a chart here. So here's this, the stream enterer, the once returner, we call it one returner, non-returner and complete liberation. Uh, once returner, that means that the person will die and then the next life will be their last life. Non-returner means that they've, uh, completely uh, let go of everything and so they will not return to reincarnate and complete liberation I uh, no it's not completely done here but, but this uh, complete liberation has completely deleted the, the last five fetters craving for existence craving for non-existence pride and self restlessness for extreme ignorance the cycle of sense okay see so this one down here says none it, they don't get recycled. Samsara is the is being in this world and reincarnating cyclically. Birth, death, and rebirth. Since beginningless time, incalculable time, or uh, beginningless time means that there's no way of figuring out when the beginning of the universe started. So that means that we as uh, sentient beings have existed since beginningless time taking rebirth and we uh, we're finally at this stage of being a human and we've discovered the Dharma and the Dharma will uh, if we follow the prescriptions will lead us to complete liberation where the complete liberation from the world of samsara where we don't take rebirth anymore. So uh, we all may be, have, may be taking rebirth. That means that, uh, well, we could take rebirth in a heaven or in a hell or as animals or as other beings, other worlds. Okay, but the, uh, the, the final goal is to try to uh, attain complete liberation from the world of samsara that involves uh, letting go of the ten fetters belief in individual self doubt or uncertainty about the dharma the teachings 
attachment to rites and rituals, sensual desire, hatred, craving for existence, craving for non-existence. That's interesting. That means uh, if, if we crave to commit suicide in order to end our suffering, that's not going to work either because <laughs> we'll come back to have an existence and it could be in a hell realm. Okay. Okay. Uh, this concludes our, well, before concluding, we have to dedicate whatever measly merit we have accumulated in this meditation, reading and meditation session to all sentient beings so that they may uh, attain liberation from the world of samsara. And uh, may I become a Buddha for the benefit of all. I think that's called dedication of merits or giving away merits whatever good karma I uh, attained in this session may I give it away to all sentient beings in the whole universe holy shit there won't be much left then so unless I could multiply it somehow anyway I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, this meditation break no meditation session and may you in your meditation break that's the time between meditations may you have a, a wonderful and prosperous meditation break and accumulating uh, much good karma and all that okay i better go, get go go to work now bye <laughs>